Welcome back to the 40th episode of the Boy Oh Boy Well podcast. Today we have another big guest who played 140 AFL games, won a best and fairest at Adelaide Crows, a showdown medal at the Adelaide Crows, and was also all Australian. Please welcome Nathan Bock. Thanks heaps for coming on today, mate. No worries. Thanks, mate. How'd you first get involved in footy? Yeah, so uh, early days as a uh, as a young kid in Adelaide, um, grew up in the the Port Adelaide region um, in a suburb called Largs Bay. So I uh, yeah grew up in a very prominent um, AFL uh, town. Obviously, Port Adelaide got a huge history um, in in the SNFL in, in South Australia anyway. And obviously now coming to the AFL, so grew up uh, obviously in a footy state in a footy area. Um, yeah, going to school as a, as a young kid. Um, yeah, met some good mates, and yeah, got into AFL probably at an early age, probably five or six, I think, maybe through school. Um, and then that followed into playing for a, an amateur local club called Port Districts. So, yeah, that's sort of how my, my junior footy career kicked off. Yeah, when did you sort of start to take your footy real seriously? Um, to be honest, probably not too. I was about 17. Yeah, I am... Um, I always enjoyed uh, playing footy as a kid, um, but yep. also had a few other interests as well. Um, we're involved in surf life saving through the summer months. Um, so, yeah, rather than playing cricket like a lot of kids, uh, we, we got brought up doing surf life saving. Um, yep. So, enjoyed enjoyed the water, and then um, that that sort of uh, sort of transitioned me into into surfing and skateboarding. So, as a sort of young teen, I uh, enjoyed enjoyed those uh, yeah skateboarding and surfing. Thing. And that was probably a, a, a more of a passion of mine, um, the, the surfing side of things. So, to be honest, yeah, you know, if, if I was good enough and uh, yeah, had the ability, I, I would have probably followed a, a surfing career. But um, yeah. fortunately enough, I, I was was a lot better at footy. So, yeah, <laughs> the age of about seventeen, I um, yeah started to really lock down and, and take take footy a lot serious. Yeah, what was the lead up to the the draft like for you personally? Um, so my, uh, yeah, so my transition into AFL was probably a little bit indifferent to the norm. Um, I actually didn't get drafted in the, the first year I was eligible. Um, the second year that I was eligible to be drafted, I actually was overlooked in the draft and taken as a, as a rookie. So the Adelaide Crows picked me up on their rookie list, um, 2002, uh, along with, um, Benny Rutten, who's, uh, who I started my career with, who's now coaching at Essendon. Um, Martin Matner was another one as well. So all three of us were actually um, rookies uh, in our first year. So, yeah, a little bit indifferent, but, um, you know, there's never a wrong or right, right way into the AFL system. It's um, just a matter of getting there and then, um, yeah, looking after the rest. Yeah, leading up to the draft, how hopeful were you of getting picked up? Oh, as I said, in the first year, I was, I was eligible, not at all, because I was only just playing. Uh, I'd only been back playing. I actually took a year off of footy when I was 16. So I was only back playing footy for a, a couple of years. Um, and then, yeah, the second year I was eligible. I was, I was reasonably confident. Um, and in saying that, the, when I didn't get drafted, it wasn't a huge surprise uh, because I sort of had an inkling from the Crows that, that I would have been taking as a, as a rookie if, if I hadn't got drafted. So yeah. there was sort of that, that, you know, you never say guarantee, um, but there was a fair bit of confidence to know that, yeah, the Crows would potentially take me as a rookie um, if I didn't get drafted. Yeah, what was it like walking into in, into the Adelaide Football Club for the first time? Yeah, it was pretty daunting. Um, you know, any kid that gets drafted, you, you generally get drafted with another four or five, six, potentially more um, kids the same age. So you sort of got a little bit of comfort in the sense that you're with, uh, you know, a few other young kids and they're all in the same boat, obviously. Um, but, yeah, to walk into a, an AFL club, something that, uh, you you know, as a young kid you aspire to, to become uh, as an AFL player, yeah, it's always a little bit daunting. Um, and then, yeah, growing up in Adelaide, 
playing at the Adelaide Crows, you know, you, you see the likes of, you know, back then was Rashudo, Goodwin, uh, McLeod, you know, these sort of players. So to walk in and obviously, um, you know, become a teammate of one of them, those guys was, uh, yeah, it's pretty humbling. But um, yeah, all, all in all, very exciting experience as well. Yeah, what was it like being elevated off the rookie list? Yeah, it's very rewarding. Um, to be to be honest, it was. Uh, it could have gone either way. It could have. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't have said I had the best uh, year as a rookie. Um, I did play some good games in the SNFL, and, and I was actually. Uh, I did play a preseason game, which which rookie players are eligible to play. Um, back then, it was the NAB Cup. Um, sorry, it might have been the Wizard Cup back then. Um, yeah, so it was the preseason comp. Um, so I did play, I think, one or two preseason games uh, in my first year, and then yeah, went on to play some good sample footy. Um, so yeah, listen, I, I wouldn't say it was a major surprise, but I, I think you still got to see yourself lucky any time you, you get an opportunity on a on a senior list. So um, yeah, it was very rewarding, and um, yeah, definitely uh, uh, appreciated that the opportunity. Yeah, what was it like having your first full preseason at Adelaide? Yeah, it was tough, um, tough to say the least. Yeah, it was it was a step up from uh, what I'd experienced at a SNFL level. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, you know, at an SNFL level, it's also hard because you, you've actually got to you, you work a normal job, day to day job. So, um, you know, I, I do take my hat off to these guys that play SNFL and VFL and whatnot because they are still training. I wouldn't say to the degree of an AFL player, but you know, not far yeah. off it. Um, yeah. And albeit still working day to, a day a day job, you know. So, um, but yeah, once you get in the AFL system, it's it's you know 100 full time job. Um, yeah, the the training does demand a lot physically and then obviously mentally as well. So, yeah, it was uh, it was tough. Um, but uh, you know, year after year, you get better at them. And 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 I was always fortunate. I, I sort of had a bit of a natural fitness base anyway. So. I um, I probably didn't struggle as much as some of the other guys, um, which which I'm always grateful for. Yeah, what was the lead up to your debut like for you? Um, the lead up to my debut, geez, we, we're going back a while now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, I can't recall the lead up too much. I, I do recall the game, um, so. It was round, Jesus, it was either round four or round five, 2004. Um, so, yeah, so we played Richmond at Etihad um, or the Telstra Dome. Um, yeah, so we had a win, which was which was always good. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get a couple of kicks. Actually, my first two kicks were, were goals. So yep. I, um, I was pretty lucky in that sense to, to kick a couple of goals um, you know I was, I was fortunate enough to line up uh, along the likes of what Wayne Carey so he came to the club for a couple of years so you know playing my first game with the likes of Wayne Carey you know obviously Rashudo Goodwin who I played a lot of football with um, yeah they're the, they're the memories you, you sort of remember for the rest of your life yeah what was it like to kick a couple of goals on your debut yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was. You know, you look back now and you go, it's it's probably a, a pretty hard task, and there's, there hasn't been a lot of players to be able to do it. Um, I was fortunate enough. I was actually standing in the zone on a on a kick out, and um, I think it's Darren Gasper. Yeah, took the took the kick out, and he he shanked it and kicked it straight to me. So it hit me in the chest. So it was <laughs> the opposition player pretty much a, 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 a shank turnover kick and, and hit me lace outs from about. 30, 30 metres from goal. So um, pretty much gifted my first goal, which uh, which I was grateful of. And then, um, yeah, second second goal, um, yeah, just a bit of a, a stock standard lead up, Mark, keep goal. So, um, yeah, pretty lucky in that sense. But, uh, yeah, it's it's one of those sort of uh, elite clubs that, uh, you know, you can say you're a part of. But, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have said the first one was was overly hard to, hard to manage. Can you talk us through your shift to the back line? Yep, so um, that happened, yeah, I think it happened early in my, my, my first year that playing AFL. I'd always played a bit of centre-half back anyway, even in my junior footies. 
footy career, sorry. Um, so I've all, always played a bit of both ends. So it wasn't sort of like I was a, started as a forward or I'd been a forward and then went back. I, I, I pr- probably played more footy back before I started playing forward as, at an AFL level anyway. So, yeah, throughout my career, um, probably played at both ends just as much as each other. So, yeah, it's it was sort of just part of my game where I was able to play at both ends, which... Um, you know, gives you that flexibility, which uh, which helps. Yeah, what was it like to create like a force down back with Ben Rudden? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we, we you know, Benny Rudden, I think, had a, an All-Australian um, a couple of years earlier than I did. Um, and so he, he probably developed as a, as a key defender a bit quicker, or yep. albeit saying that I was probably playing a little bit more forward anyway. So, uh, but yeah, by the time I think two thousand and five ish, yeah, or oh, in saying that, I still spent footy games playing forward after that. But yeah, I think oh five, and then sort of later on, sort of around the oh eight, oh nine, oh ten, sort of time we um, yeah played a lot of footy down back together, and um, yeah, it's always good to have a, a couple of key defenders that you know can pick up um, you know two, two key forwards. Yeah, what was it like to play in your first final series? Yeah, it was good. It was exciting. Um, happened pretty early on too. So I debuted in 04 um, and then in 05 we were playing in a, a prelim final. So, you know, by the time 05 come around, we, we, we had a really strong side. Um, so, yeah, 2005, 2006, played back-to-back prelims um, and come up short, obviously, in both of them against West Coast, who, yeah, always managed just to have our, have our measure. Um, they're a bit of a bogey side for us, unfortunately, and, uh, yeah, just couldn't get over the line. But, um, yeah, definitely played better in the 06 prelim. Um, I wasn't overly happy with my 05, but, um, yeah, it was one of those things that uh, you've got to be grateful for all the finals for you, you played because a lot of players don't, don't get the ability to play that. Yeah, how much pressure did you sort of feel in your first final series? Um. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, there's always pressure in any any game, any AFL level, but uh, obviously finals is at another level again. So, yeah, no, there was definitely definitely pressure um, and that expectation to perform as well. Yeah, what was it like to be all Australian and win Adelaide's best and fairest in the same year? It was good. Yep, yeah, obviously very re- rewarding. Um, yeah, just had one of those years where I was able to stay. You know, injury free that always helps. Um, the more footy you can, you know, spend out in the park, the better. Um, and yeah, had a really good side around me as well, which which definitely helps as a as a defender. So yeah, having the the, the likes of McLeod and I think Goodwin spent time down there. Um, Graham Johncock, Michael Dowdy, and then obviously Benny Rutten. You know, so we had a really strong sort of back six, which uh, which gives you the ability to to play well week in week out. Yeah, what was it like to win another medal in the showdown medal? Yeah, it was, it was good. They're always big games. They're always like final, finals, like games. Um, if not, if not, you know, bigger than some finals I've played in. Um, every showdown was always a, a big game, and they, uh, yeah, big crowds. Um, obviously, hostile crowds when when Port had their home games. So. Um, yeah, showdown medal was was good, but I, I think from memory, I don't think we won the game. So it was just almost a little bit of bittersweet. Yeah. Can you talk us through for the people who don't haven't really witnessed a showdown, what it's like and how much sort of pressure you feel out there? Yeah, well, there's big. There's a big build up. Um, it's obviously Adelaide's obviously a two team town, so. Um, yeah, the, you're either Port or the Crows, you know. So you, we're fortunate enough at Adelaide, at the Crows, we, we probably had a bigger supporter base. Um, but still, there's always a, that massive rivalry um, and build up to, to every showdown. Um, you play two of them a year. You sort of set yourself as, as probably two of the biggest games of the season. Um, and it doesn't really matter where either side are, are sort of situated on the ladder. You know, yeah. one could be top, one could be bottom. It's still going to be a fierce contest and, and potentially could go either way. So, yeah, very rarely. I, I do recall one showdown where we, we dominated and we absolutely, uh, yeah, took them to the cleaners. But other than that, 
Um, generally, they were very, very close games and, and very heated games too. They were very physical and, um, they were, they, yeah, they were, they were good games to play in. Yeah, what was it like facing the team that you grew up barracking for? <laughs> yeah, it, oh, it is what it is. I, I actually, to be honest, I, I barracked for the Port Adelaide Magpies and then when I started following AFL, I was actually a Geelong Cats supporter. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, once you start playing for either team, you develop this bitter, bitter rivalry um, towards the other. So, yeah, no, nah, it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was just keen to get out there and get amongst it. Yeah, can you talk us through your move to the Gold Coast Suns? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that come about sort of, you know, probably mid year. Um, Obviously, the, the Gold Coast were announced a year or two prior to them coming into the, the competition. And then as, as they got closer to entering the competition, um, special uh, criteria, I suppose, come about in terms of what players they could access, um, potentially, you know, uncontracted players. So I, I sort of sat in that that sort of criteria of, of what they could possibly get. Um, and then rumours started to swirl about potential players and I think it was it was Benny Rutten and myself, I think from memory, um, that were players that potentially had links to the Gold Coast. Now I only had a couple of conversations throughout that year um, with my manager and 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 sons himself, maybe one. So yeah, it was just an opportunity uh, to be involved in a in a new club, um, inaugural uh, startup club in the AFL. And then, you know, liking my surfing and, and the warmer climate um, was always pretty uh yeah enticing um, to, to make the move. So um, yeah, no, they had its challenges along the way. There's, there's no doubt about that. But um, yeah, still living up here now, so I, I don't regret the move. Yeah, what was it like joining an inaugural club? Yeah, as I said, it had its challenges. Um, definitely wasn't fitted out from a facility point of view anywhere like I thought it would be. Um, yep. So yeah, that, that had its challenges. Um, yeah, bringing, uh, you know, bringing 40-odd players together that never really had met or knew each other was always going to be a challenge. Um, and then on top of that, you know, 70 80% of that team being first-year players, um, so effectively a bunch of, you know, young kids. Uh, yeah, challenge, challenging was probably the, the, the key word that would sum it up. Um, it was tough. We, we, you know, our facilities, I wouldn't have said, were... Uh, at a professional level, by no means. Um, and unfortunately, the first two years we got up there, we had those uh, those heavy, heavy rains. So um, Queensland experienced um, some he heavy flooding, um, yep. which which made it really hard to, to train and get out onto the training paddock on a regular yep. basis. So our pre-season for the first two years were really interrupted, training perspective. Um, so that, that, that also added X you know, extra um, challenges along the way. Yeah, being one of the senior players at the Gold Coast at that time, did you sort of act as like a mentor or give any advice to any of the young fellas? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, there was um, obviously Gary, Gary Ablett, um, Campbell Brown, myself, uh, Jared Brennan, Harbrow. So there was, you know, Risk of Tally. So there was quite a handful of experienced players. So we, we sort of had to, um, you know, act as extra coaches, extra mentors for a lot of the young players because generally, you know, with a, a senior, well, not a senior, but an established football club, um, you know, the average age is probably 24, 25. No, our average age was probably 19 or 20, just given the amount of, um, you know, amount of young players we had on that list at the time. So, yeah, no, we were continually uh, trying to mentor and, um, and, and coach the young players players and, and get them developed as quick as possible. So, um, yeah, a lot of extra work for, for the older guys for sure. Yeah, what was it like playing your first game for Gold Coast? Um, yeah, it was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, we uh, the, 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 probably the whole time I played at the Gold Coast, our performances were, were a challenge just because of the inexperienced team we had. Um, so we played Carlton at the Gabba. And that was the other thing as well. Um, you know, the stadium due to still being built, I think, or the Commonwealth Games was one of the other. 
no, it's still been built. Um, we played that first half of the year at the Gabba. Um, yep. So, you know, we we had to travel up the road to get to get to the Gabba. Um, so all our, all our home games were up there, which had its challenges as well. Um, nothing kind of like probably Geelong do when they have to drive down to Melbourne, but, um, you know, it's still, it's still a travel. Um, but yeah, having an inexperienced team round one definitely didn't go as, as well as we would have liked. So yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the result we wanted, but you know, it was the first game for the footy club and an experience all in all. Yeah. What was it like to have some serious injuries at the back end of your career? Not great, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, breaking your leg at any time in your career is never nice, um, never alone doing it sort of towards the end of your career. So, yeah, I think I was 30 or nearly 30 at the time. Um, yeah, just an innocuous, you know, mid-air collision um, and, and, yeah, did a pretty serious injury. So, yeah, unfortunately, those injuries, uh, they stay with you for life. They're, they're not injuries that will sort of recover harbour from too quickly and you know still still feel the effects of it now um but you know that's footy that's that's unfortunately the game we play it's a very much a contact sport so you have to expect uh to have some sort of injuries along the way and just unfortunate i um i had one you know the second year um at the suns and and you know didn't didn't allow me to sort of fulfill the you know, the, the type of footy uh, or, or the player that I wanted to be um, and, and particularly to finish my career on. Yeah, what led to this, the decision to retire? I suppose just just the, the injury itself, um, you know, it's such a tough injury to get back from. Um, and, yeah, I think just... Just, just really struggling to, to string training sessions and then obviously games together. And then, yeah, being at the age of, I think, 31 or 32. So, um, yeah, had it, had enough. The body had enough. Unfortunately, would have liked to play a little bit more football. Um, but, yeah, body, the body sort of took its toll. So, yeah, finished up. Yeah, who were some of the best players you played with throughout your career? Um, there's still a couple of them running around. One played last night, actually, uh, Josh Kennedy, who, who was a quality forward. Uh, well, he's a quality forward. He was always a handful. Um, Buddy was probably up there with the toughest. Uh, well, I probably put Buddy, Pavlich, Rewalt, Nick Rewalt in, in the top three as, as the toughest. Um, but then, yeah, you know, Matty Richardson, um, you know, had stints on Barry Hall. Yeah, they're, they, they're probably the, the handful that come to mind, which, you know, are, uh, arguably some of the, the great full forwards that have played in the modern era. So, um, yeah, but Buddy probably at the top. Yeah, what was it like to play with Gary Ablett? Yeah, it was great. You know, it was, it was uh, you know, arguably the best player in, in the era of, of AFL. So, um yeah, phenomenal talent, um, just just naturally gifted. Obviously, works hard um, as well. But uh, what what some of the things he does on a football field, I've I've never ever seen any other player do. Um, yeah, at any time in my career. So, yeah, seeing that sort of stuff live as well, and being able to play alongside him was uh, you know it's pretty special. And um, yeah, something that that you'll sort of remember throughout your well, remember for the rest of your life from your playing career. Yeah, what were some of the best moments of your career? Yeah, 2008 was a good year. So All-Australian, um, best and fairest winner. Uh, oh, 2005, 2006, just being part of a, a really strong team and arguing. Um, I think we won 10, 10, maybe 11, 12 games straight. Um, unfortunately, West Coast just, just got a measure that year and, and the year before. But, um, yeah, definitely 05, 06, probably that era from 05 to 09 was was probably that, you know, that four or five years was the best chunk of my career um, and just really enjoyed playing, you know, creating great friendships and great mates along the way. Um, and, yeah, just being able to perform at the elite level on a, on a weekly basis, um, you know, particularly in Adelaide, you know, you sort of remember those the games, the big games that you play in front of big crowds, you know, 40, 50,000 at, um, at Amy Stadium, Amy Park or 
yeah, whatever they called it back then. Um, yeah, was was some of the best memories. Yeah, if you had any advice for young footballers, what would it be? Um, just be persistent, work hard. Um, you know, nothing comes easy. There's been very few players that I've seen that are just just based on talent will get there. Uh, so yeah, just persistence, hard work, and and just enjoy your footy. Enjoy enjoyment's the key thing. You know, and it's, it's really hard to have the motivation to, to work hard. So yeah. That's everything I got for you, mate. Thanks, Ape, once again for coming on. No worries. Nice to meet you, mate. So you play a bit of footy yourself?